Merida, Mexico entices visitors from near and far with its rich Mayan heritage, elegant colonial charm, and vibrant culinary scene. Bustling markets fill the city center and stunning cenotes dot the region offering magical escapes into the depths of the Yucatan Peninsula's natural wonders. For the next 72 hours, we'll be enjoying the best of Merida for the second time because our first trip was all the way back in 2019 when we came to visit with two of our friends from college. Yeah, it was literally the best trip ever. We went to see Mayan ruins, we swam in cenotes. What else did we do? We did oh, so much more. But... We ate like the best food ever. Oh yeah. And we participated in some local traditions. It was literally amazing. We loved it so much that we were back here in Merida once again. And I'm excited to see what we experienced this time around. Yeah. We're coming in the middle of March, whereas last time we visited in December. the beginning of December. Yeah. So I think the weather will be just a little bit different, a little bit um, on the farther end of the dry season. And yeah, let's just see what all we do. <laughs> doing here in Merida is actually going to the dentist. <laughs> yeah, we haven't been to the dentist in I'd say a little bit of time and I was originally looking in the US for a dentist appointment and prices were just super expensive and I had heard great things about dental care in Mexico, that it was affordable and honestly just incredible service. And so I booked an appointment for us. It's about a 10 minute walk from where we are now. We're gonna go in about an hour or so. I'm really excited. Yeah, I'm super excited. I'm excited to see if there's anything different about <laughs> a dentist appointment in Mexico versus the US. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and also to get my teeth cleaned. <laughs> yeah. So far, way more welcoming than the United States. There's a nice couch for me to sit back on. I brought a book. I'm really excited. There's air conditioning, and it feels like we're in someone's house, like I just walked into a home. Oh, I feel very, very comfortable. I was actually a little bit nervous to come to the dentist, like I always am, but now I feel ready. I just finished up my teeth cleaning. Claire is still waiting. I just put my phone in my mouth with a flashlight on, and I got a beautiful shot of my teeth. <laughs> They are so clean now. I don't know if Chad's more proud of the photo he got of his teeth or his clean teeth. <laughs> Why not both? But like, wow. Love that frame. Maybe. So much cleaner. They look amazing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that our teeth are freshly sharpened. Freshly. <laughs> Well, now that our teeth are fresh and ready to go, we are gonna go get some dinner. It's yep. gonna be delicious. Get, get them all dirty again, I yeah, guess. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to the Chaya Maya restaurant. My name is Miguel, and we feel like you're serving today to two special uh, guests of today. <laughs> nice, thank you, thank you. Best server in the house. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Miguel. Tonight for dinner, we are at La Chaya Maya, and we are in for such an awesome feast. As you can see right behind me, there is a nice little abuela, and she is making some corn tortillas from scratch. And it's just awesome to be able to see her make it. And then they're like corn tortilla chips on the table. And I know that it went through like her hands to get to our table. But essentially we will be trying Yucateca cuisine this evening. It's so warm. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> Should I try it? Yeah, go ahead. Wow. That's awesome. Wow. That is so good. So the word chaya references this leaf that you see right here. Apparently it's very similar to spinach, but it is a special leaf that grows in this region. I have a drink that's made from it and it's mixed with pineapple juice. Salud. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Interesting. The taste of the leaf is similar to like a combination of celery and mint. That's, that's my take on it. And then you taste the pineapple. The very first thing we have on the table is sopa de lima, and this soup is so delicious. It's actually the thing that I remember most from our last trip to the Yucatan. It's this 
very fragrant soup made from these shredded turkey pieces that have been marinated in Yucatan lime. And the special thing about the limes here is that they're a little bit sweet and a little bit sour. On the table, we also have two tacos made from those special handmade corn tortillas. And the first one that we have is queso relleno. And this is made from a very special cheese from the Netherlands. It is from Edam. And a little sneak peek, we'll actually be going to Edam next month to try the cheese in the Netherlands. But right now we get a little taste of what's to come. And then the other taco is pavo de relleno negro. This utilizes a special paste made from blackened chilies. And that's why you kind of see that like dark, blackish brown color and there's also a hard boiled egg on the top and then this leaf right here is the the chaya that I was telling you about earlier so the plant that my drink was made from and in front of me on this iron skillet is thinly sliced pork marinated in sour orange juice along with this black bean I'd call it more of like a sauce that I put on the pork and it comes with red onion some rice and then some more like salsa oh, it looks amazing and then you basically form your own little corn tortilla taco. That is a very good taco. Oh my goodness. I just love the, the sour flavor. I think my new favorite thing is sour soups. We had some really sour soups over in the Philippines and we are just continuing it on here. We also had the um, sopa azteca, which is also a little bit a little bit tart, but this is definitely more on the sour side. Oh, it just hits different and when it's hot out, you really, really want a hit of that sour soup. Oh my gosh, there's like cheese oozing off of it. It is so filled. Oh yeah, cheese lover's paradise right here. The cheese is not too um, potent. It's actually very smooth. All right, now I'm going for the relleno negro. It tastes like if you threw a ton of chili peppers into a campfire and you could like somehow take the scent of that and put it into a dish. That's what this is right here. I didn't know that we were going to get dessert tonight, but Chad was very adamant that we did. And so... Here we are. <laughs> so here we are. <laughs> Gotta use the new teeth. <laughs> The new tea, the clean tea. <laughs> the new tea. Yeah, Got we, denture. <laughs> denture. Anywho, this is Regal Caballero Cobre, and it is a Yucatecan version of bread pudding. Yep. It's topped with some ice cream and also a Mayan liqueur that's made from fermented honey and anise seeds. Yes. It's really large. It's very large. <laughs> Bigger than I thought I'm it would be. I'm hoping that it's lighter than it looks, like the bread. It does have a, a bit of a fermented taste to it. And the liqueur certainly comes through quite a bit. Two blocks from La Chaya Maya is Plaza Grande, which is this beautiful square in the center of Merida and there are people out. We've been sitting in these really unique chairs that I absolutely love. They're called Chairs of You and Me. I just think the design is so smart. You can basically have conversations with people very easily, mm -hmm. and it's kind of intimate. They're actually very, very comfortable, and the legend behind it is there was this very strict father, and he had a daughter who wanted to go meet up with a boy in the park and he was spying on them in the park and they're sitting on a normal bench, but they were just a tad too close to each other. And so he built this very special chair where they could sit, still have meaningful conversation, but they wouldn't be as close as they would be on a normal bench. And so that is the legend as to why this was created. <laughs> I personally feel like it's even easier to kiss someone or to be close in this <laughs> you chair. Just lean you just lean forward. but. Hey, whatever floats your boat, I guess. Yeah, but this really is the perfect chair for like deep convo. Yeah. Like you can just look straight into whoever you're talking to's eyes, and yeah, it's just or their oh, teeth, so you know, if they're shining like ours. <laughs> <laughs> is this gonna be the ongoing joke? <laughs> so we have really clean teeth. <laughs> but I've actually been sitting on this chair for a little bit while Claire was filming around the square, and I was watching. This sounds weird, but I was watching the children in the square, and I was reminiscing on being a child during dusk. Because growing up, I used to go to these concerts in the park that were free, and like the whole community would come together. And I just remember being so excited for like the sunset, for the ambient music, for just the energy of like 
the whole community being around and I'd just be running around with so much joy and watching the kids right over there just reminded me of that feeling and I was like man I kind of wish I could just run around and just <laughs> be full of pure you, joy like that you could I mean I could why but, not <laughs> I mean no I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that but yeah I guess while Chad was watching the children I was walking around and there's actually a market along the edge and there are all these local artisans selling uh, handmade crafts and I was like this is just so cool Merida is such a cool city yeah. and it feels like such a mix of modern and traditional it does. and I just I love it. I love it so much. Yeah, because we had been here before, I just had such fond memories. And it's such a colorful city as well. Like, all the buildings are just beautiful, bright colors. Yeah, and because it was so colorful, I even whipped out my most colorful dress to match the vibes of Merida. Yeah. And it feels really good to be back. So this morning before we even went to the dentist's office, we had driven 45 minutes north to Tabiljatun, which would be the closest Mayan ruins to Merida. And when we got to the gate, we found out that it's actually closed until the end of this month. So we just drove up to the entrance of Zabilchatun. It took us about 45 minutes to get here. And unfortunately, it's closed at the moment due to renovations. There was no mention on Google Maps or on their website. So we were a bit surprised by that. So we now have to change our plans. We were really disappointed because we love those ruins. And right by those ruins is the most beautiful open air cenote. And I was so excited to go swimming yeah. in it because there are these fish that actually nibble on your toes and I think eat the dead skin off your feet and I was so so excited like a free nature spa day so we really wanted to show you that place but because we couldn't we still highly recommend that you go if you come to Merida and there's another ruin uh, that's I believe just an hour and a half away called Chichen Itza that we went to last time as well and that was amazing yeah we were deciding whether we should go to Chichen Itza again tomorrow but it's gonna be like a hundred and one degree out right. we remember there's like no shade there <laughs> and we don't want to get sunburned <laughs> yeah because we had just gotten sunburned in the last country yeah real bad like, we're trying to be <laughs> careful yeah so I think tomorrow's plan is going to consist more of cenotes mm -hmm. um, but because we're not showing any Mayan ruins we just wanted to tell you guys like if you are coming to the Yucatan Peninsula you definitely got to see some Mayan ruins because they're <laughs> very very special yeah. we just wanted to be transparent about the way we've been planning this trip and thinking through like what should we do next? What would be best for the video? What would be best for, for ourselves, us, our skin? <laughs> <laughs> but with all that said, we're going to get some shut eye and we'll catch you all in the morning. <laughs> So just like our last trip to Merida, we decided to rent a car again just because we had such a fun time being able to drive on the, the roads to the cenotes and the ruins. And so we were able to pick up this rental car. I actually used a new online service called Discover Cars. It was actually really interesting because what they do is they basically give you the cheapest price and they show you all of the different like common car rental companies like Avis, Hertz, and then you can pick the one that has like good reviews and a good price, you know, cause you're trying to find that good balance of like quality and price and so we did that and we ended up going with Avis uh, for this rental and it was like only a few hundred bucks which to me was very affordable because I'm pretty sure last time it was a lot more just because we booked directly so I just wanted to share that with you guys because honestly I have enjoyed using discover cars we have a link with them if you want to use it but I just recommend looking into it because what has been nice is they have like this app which gives you this PDF of your car rental and it was just a lot more straightforward than other rentals that I've done in the past. I think it's because you have the flexibility to go with any car company and they just have their system down. So, so far, very good. our big cenote day and just an hour's drive southeast from Merida is this huge collection of cenotes probably dozens of cenotes just in that one area and we're just gonna kind of drive around see which ones are open today and hopefully we can swim in all three different kinds of cenotes we'll tell you a little bit more about the history once we get there but we've packed a picnic brunch and I need to share the price because it was just such a good deal so we got three sandwiches that were filled with meats like sausages and asado and then we also got two conchas 
and it was only 94 pesos for everything which is about like five US dollars such a great deal and I know it's gonna be plenty filling so we are currently driving over there right now and I'm just so excited we're gonna go and swim soak in some sunshine eat some good food and just have a fun day of adventure We've made it to the first cenote and I will say it is not as busy as I expected and the facilities are really nice. They actually have some animals out front. They have bathrooms and then we're about to descend into the cave and it looks pretty deep. <laughs> wow, that feels good. So nervous. <sighs> we are currently here during the end of dry season, and you can definitely tell that the water is probably a little bit lower than it would normally be, but it's still plenty of water to swim around for sure. <laughs> So something we always travel with now is our snorkel, especially if we're going to a warm destination. And now I get to see under the water, which is something I didn't get to do last time. And I'm very, very excited to see what's growing under there. Growing. <laughs> okay, going down. Goodbye. It's kind of creepy <laughs> being able to see what's under there because it's actually really deep. I just keep the rock. in a hammock behind me. That time in the cenote was just so relaxing. Honestly, coming out, I thought I was gonna be super hot just because it is really hot outside, but the cenote has cooled me down and honestly, the warm breeze feels amazing. So we've been sitting in these chairs and these hammocks that they provide here. I wanted to take this moment to share a little bit of the history of cenotes in the Yucatan. So the Mayan people relied heavily on cenotes because they are a freshwater source when the Yucatan doesn't have any major rivers and so they would worship these cenotes. They were kind of seen as like a passage to the underworld. It is just so cool that these cenotes exist because it's unlike any other like freshwater source that you typically see, but it's also super labor intensive. So in order for the Mayans to grow crops, they actually would use this like slash and burn technique. They would go through the forest, they would cut down all the trees and then burn it in order to add nutrients to the soil so that they could grow crops. And that would only last for a few years before they would move to a new area, slash that area, burn it and kind of repeat the process. But in order to water their plants, they would have to get water from these cenotes, which is honestly super labor intensive. And so what I've heard is that they were able to come up with some very like clever techniques of collecting the water like big engineering marvels um, Which is really cool to hear about just because they were able to support a large number of people was um, semi-open so there was a hole on the top that you can look up see the greenery hanging down and then you can also see the cave surrounding it and this one is definitely full-on in a cave we've actually been quite hesitant about going swimming in one that's in a cave because it just gets so dark and creepy but this one has really pretty lighting and a nice ambiance there's this really beautiful tree to my right and it essentially has its roots hanging all the way down into the cenote where it's getting its water find the words on how I can 
describe how quiet it is in here. And it's literally so quiet that you can hear the silence, you know, like that little hum that you get in your eardrums because there's literally no other sound there to cover it up. <laughs> it's also so quiet that I would just feel a little naughty if I spoke at a normal volume. <laughs> And that is why I'm whispering. We are currently the only ones in the water. This entire pool and being in the cave is definitely like a forced meditation because you can't hear anything at all. And so then you're just alone with your thoughts. And I feel like I can also see clearer now because I'm like not thinking of anything other than how quiet it is. There are all these small black, I'm assuming catfish because they have whiskers just like scanning the bottom of the cenote. Let me see if I can get a shot of it for you. So this cenote was unlike any other cenote I've ever been to. It was definitely the most spiritual, I would say, just in the fact that there was no one there, it was quiet, and you just feel such a connection to the earth, especially once you come out. Yeah. It's like you're being reborn or something. Yeah, I feel extremely refreshed, like more than any kind of massage yeah. or spa day could ever do for me and I stayed in the water for quite some time and I was just playing with the water looking at how it kind of reacted to the light and I was also playing with the catfish <laughs> I was calling myself the queen of the catfish and just imagining I don't know she just has a good imagination <laughs> who knows what she was imagining she came out of the water and she told me like I learned how to lure the catfish to me so she was pushing her hands to the water and apparently they think that like something landed on the water so she's like there were 10 catfish around me all yeah. trying to get my fingers so then I just lifted my fingers and then they all swam away yeah yeah that was a pretty uh, magical moment for me I must say <laughs> <sighs> yeah but being outside of the cave it's just so nice yeah the sunlight feels amazing especially coming out from that really cooling water oh it feels so good to El Tapish, which is just down the street from our hotel, and we got some drinks. Yes. Last night we had that um, chaya and uh, pineapple drink that was so good, so we got another one. And then... And this is a Paloma, which has tequila, and I believe it's like a grapefruit soda. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't want to taste the salted rim? No. <gasps> Too much salt. Yeah, it's just like a really clean, clean drink. Last night we really, really loved the pork chuk, so we got another one of those. And then here we have hanuchos, but we got it with cochinita veal, which is another very famous dish here. So it's kind of like you're getting two famous Yucateca dishes in one. Yeah. And basically the panucho is this like corn tortilla. It has the meat on top. And I think it, there's something with the corn tortilla that makes it, it special. It looks thicker. Yeah. So I'm trying to figure out what's different about this dish, but honestly it's just very tender meat. I think there's some black bean at the bottom. And the corn tortilla just seems a little bit like juicier maybe, but otherwise it's very similar to just like a normal taco. I would say it's juicier. I was listening very intently when Chad was describing what he thought these were and he's like there's like a bean paste or something in there and I just cut into it and there literally is a layer of bean paste in between the two corn tortillas. Wild. Personally, I think the bean paste makes the corn tortillas even more moist and so I would prefer if all the corn tortillas had like this little layer of bean paste in it. Oh my goodness. So the flan dessert has been on basically every single menu on every restaurant we've been to in Mexico so far. And tonight we finally decided to get it. And I'm very, very excited to dig into it. It's 
cold, it's creamy, it's got a hint of vanilla. One of my favorite desserts of all time. Probably because I grew up with it. My mom made a lot of flan. A lot of flan. <laughs> Buenos dias. Today it is Sunday and originally we had plans to go and participate in Bici Ruta which is a traditional activity that takes place on Sundays in the city of Merida. But unfortunately this time around they're doing some road construction and so we aren't going to be able to do it. But if you do come to Merida we highly recommend it. We did it back in 2019 and it was super fun. They essentially closed down a lot of streets that normally have cars running through them and it's dedicated to the bicyclists. So you can rent a bike and just just go all around it's a fun time all the locals are out on um, the patios of restaurants you know taking some sips of coffee and watching the cyclists go through the city but instead we've decided to go and visit another cenote since we had so much fun yesterday and we are going to one that's actually just outside of Chichen Itza we went last time and it was beautiful because it's another one of those cenotes that's half cave half open air so we're excited to show you all and it's gonna be about 50 more minutes till we get there We have just made it to the cenote and Chad is running back to the car to get our snorkeling gear um, but it costs about 150 pesos per person to come inside. It's definitely one of the more expensive ones we've been to but the whole area, the whole grounds of the cenote is very very large and the cenote itself is pretty big. So I can, I can see where the value holds in that but it's very very hot. I'm sweating like crazy. I'm just so ready to jump in the waters. Got yes. the snorkels. <laughs> Nice. That's it is so hot. Good. I don't have it, but it's like 96, I think, today. Whew. Before hopping into this one, we have to rinse off with these little showers. Ooh, oh, it feels so good. Oh, man. That feels wonderful. So we just got a fresh coconut and I've been looking for this for the longest time all throughout Merida. I actually thought like coconut season was just over because I couldn't find any. We had it last time and the coconut water is just, it's amazing. That's why I would, I've been craving it. <laughs> it's a big coconut. Mm. I knew you'd want the inside of the coconut. <laughs> just want a little bit of the meat. Oh, you got it. Mm. We can crack it open when we get to our place. Yeah, we need to. We definitely need to crack this open and eat all the delicious meat on the inside. That's my favorite part, actually. What an extremely long travel day. Claire thinks it was really short. That was because I guess you were reading your book. <laughs> I'm in the passenger seat enjoying my time. My drinking foot. my coconut. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it was really nice being able to break up the drive with the cenote today just because it was absolutely beautiful. I love watching the stalactites fall down and it just is so deep and it's kind of creepy but I love it at the same time. Yeah that cenote was especially interesting because when you look down and the sun's coming out 
the light rays just go in. Oops, sorry. Whoa, the light <laughs> I'm just, rays. <laughs> I'm just too excited about the light rays. The light rays go into this point, and it's kind of like a prism, and yeah. it looks like something that's been computer generated. Yeah. <laughs> it was it does. so beautiful. With all that said, thank you so much for joining us in Merida. And if you'd like to see where we go next, hit subscribe as we travel to 50 countries around the world. And also, a really big thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. Mm -hmm. You guys are a huge reason as to why we were able to do what we do. Mm -hmm. And with all that said, catch you on the next one. Adios. Mm -hmm.